Hello! Hey, I want to show you how you can quickly download a PDF of coloring book pages and then bring them into your favorite painting app, all for free, all very easy. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Clip Studio Paint, so let's do it. So here's what we'll do. You're going to need some coloring book pages, and so for free, why not grab some off of my Buy Me a Coffee page, buymeacoffee.com slash cheap chills. All right, so click on that. Let's draw goths coloring pages. Say, get this. This is gratis. You know, if you want to buy me a coffee or something, you can drop a couple bucks or whatever, but you don't have to. And then hit download. I've already done that. So it's just going to go into my downloads folder, which we will find through another app that is free, the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Go into browse more files and in my downloads folder here that's my default here it is let's draw goths and so clicking it opens it up it's 10 pages anyway if you go in to the three dots at the top right and go export pdf there's going to be a bunch of file types that aren't very helpful but then if you click image you can choose jpeg or ping Go ahead and do JPEG, continue, and then the uh, one on the right here, save to photos. I did that wrong. Let's go select all and then save to photos. So that takes just about a few seconds to process and then it ends up in your photos. So there's a couple ways that I like to bring in photos into Clip Studio. Uh, I'm gonna show you the second easiest first which is to hold down on something in this thumbnail view and hit copy. And then go into Clip Studio and hit paste. And I wanna show you that because, you know, that's a good way to compile lots of images. But anyway, the easiest way is to go file, create new from photo library, and then you can pick something out of there, easy peasy. So this isn't gonna be a full drawing coloring demo, but I did wanna show you how to get set up. Basically what you wanna do is convert that layer into a reference layer by hitting the little uh, lighthouse in the layers panel. So then whatever layer you're working on, it's still gonna be paying attention to the line work on this layer. Okay, so this will be our coloring layer. Typically what I might do is just, you know, have a little color palette going and use the paint bucket to draw, drop in color. Now it's not showing up because I forgot the step of turning this layer into a multiplier layer. Easy enough. I've also got the settings for the paint bucket. Area scaling is on and it's set to four. And that way, you know, when you're dealing with line art that's got the anti-aliasing like this, you're not gonna end up with gross uh, little white anomalies. Instead, area scaling on, no problem. So what happens is I'll just drop in a bunch of flats, it's called, just quickly dropping in with the paint bucket. And then also you can use the magic wand tool to select areas. And it's doing the same thing with the area scaling of two here. You can see it kind of digs into the black so that there's a little bit of overlap. So then if you have like an airbrush or something like where you want to do more something more painterly than just dropping in with the paint bucket, you can do that. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.